Well, this time we've got a lady that if you don't know her, it's, it's your loss. She's been on the city council how many years? 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. And you've done more than that. You've done, I mean, you're everywhere. Jeannie Crew is here. It's good to have you, babe. I'm blessed to be able to give. The subject is homeless folk. And you know the numbers are growing. Mm -hmm. You know Tulsa has a crisis. Mm -hmm. They have a crisis. Mm -hmm. Other cities have the same crisis going on. Mm -hmm. What do we do about it? Well, one thing, we have started a committee. It started at the council. The mayor has created a, a larger committee. We meet every other week at least, if not every week, to talk about. You can have money, but if you don't have a plan, if you don't get those wraparound services, you're not going to accomplish anything. And being an ER nurse, volunteering at the day center like I've had, done in the past, we have to understand the needs. You cannot put someone off the street that knows how to be a good tenant, knows how to pay their rent, pay their electric, bring food in. We've got to keep those wraparound services. So that's something on the committee I've really been pushing. The homeless culture is so diverse. Mm -hmm. It runs from educated mm -hmm. to non-educated, mm -hmm. black, white, Asian, any any, any culture you want is on the street. I see them every day. And Sam. you know that you can't just go in and say, oh, you don't have a mental illness because mm -hmm. that ain't going to work. You've got to have the wraparound services You've for You've got to have all kinds of services. And now where do we start? And that's what we're looking at. We were very blessed that the city of Tulsa citizens voted, as you are one of them, to improve our Tulsa project for $75 million. People don't understand, you can't always come up with an idea. The money's not available now, but that's why we've got to come up with the best plan. That's why we've been to Denver. That's why we're going to Texas. That's why we've been in Oklahoma City. What is the best way to spend the money? We can tell you how not to spend it. We had an example of a hotel that residents didn't like, but we had to house people during last winter. I didn't feel like that turned out as great for our city and the use of our money. But we've got to figure out that plan. How are we gonna get wraparound services in every hotel, every day center? The homeless does a great job because they have the staff there to do that. But we've got to educate citizens to understand these are not overnight problems. These problems have been going on for years and they're in every city and we've got to just have help. We've got to learn what other cities are doing, which that's what the city council and the mayor are working on now, finding the best practices. We've got to have those low barrier shelters. We have people coming out of the hospital that are homeless and no place to go. Well, the hospitals happen to keep them longer. So then, you know, being a nurse, that's a concern for me because you're having to wait longer to get a room because we don't have rooms available because there's no place for some of our unsheltered to go. Mm -hmm. So we've got to work out plans. There's so many different groups that we're looking at, the people with mental health, the people with alcohol. You know, how do we get the support each individual needs? How do we teach people a budget? I go out and have meetings with our Tulsa Housing Authority, and they tell me a lot of people are behind on the rent. How are we helping them understand what their priorities are and understand we've got, we are the most blessed city with so many wonderful groups. George Kaiser Family Foundation, Hardesty, everyone, I can't even name them all that are helping, but we've got to figure out how the best way to help these people. It's the, yeah, the solution's gonna lie somewhere between caring and throwing money. Yes. It, because that's not gonna cut. No. It's not going to cut it. And, and I got to tell you, we throw I've money. been out, uh, as, I, as I told our other guest a while ago, I've been out it, late in the evening. Mm -hmm. I have seen, I have heard, I have watched, I've taken pictures because I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a lot of cases. Then I find out Tulsa isn't unique in that respect. We have it all over the country. Mm -hmm. But, 
there is a glimmer of hope because some cities and towns have found partial solutions to it. And that's what you're saying you're involved in. Yes. We went out in Denver. There's a tiny home program. We're getting two built in Tulsa now that the people can stay the rest of their life if they choose. As long as they're married, it's not for children. But we also, with children, we're working with Tulsa Housing. That's The mayor's made this a priority that how do we get families into Tulsa Housing on the priority list that need to be housed now. Those babies need to get in school. They need to have a clean, good, healthy environment. And so that's been the priority of this group with four counselors and the mayor and the mayor's staff and several of the nonprofits. So many of them living on the razor's edge. Yes. Our evidence indicates that the child or the children in that family get their only balanced meal or perhaps their only meal of the day at school. I know. That's not the way it should be. No, it should not. And the parent is made to suffer. Emotions boil over. There's child abuse. And I mean, when they hit the street, oh it gets gosh. worse. Mm -hmm. so, I'm very involved in Webster High School, so I know those issues. And I get calls from my constituents. I had a lady the other day, doesn't have a car, I'm trying to help her learn the new microbus system, which is a change for people. It's kind of like an Uber type system. But people, and her son has a disability. He acted up at school. And I was not where I was able to leave, but I kept in contact with her to make sure the child arrived home because she had no transportation to get to the school to pick up her child. And she has, I mean, we have citizens out there that need our help so bad. That's why I give my cell phone to everyone. If they have an issue, I do this because I hope I can help them in some kind of way. Is the rest of the city council as well informed as you are? Oh, there's a lot of well informed city councilors. You know, of course, Phil Lakin is, works for the, one of the largest giving organizations. Mm -hmm. This is, he's on this committee with me. He's with the Lord Kaiser Decker Foundation. Life. Yes. And we all know this is happening. We all go to meetings. When we went to Denver, we had a group. When we went to uh, Oklahoma City, we had a group looking at their homeless shelters and asking, what do you feel you could do if you could change something right now that would make it easier, more convenient, make people feel welcome to even want to come to the Begs shelter? the question then of the cities you've visited so far, mm -hmm. are there any that have stumbled across some sort of solution. There's small little pockets that are important. It's not one thing that you're gonna come out, Sam, today and say, we're gonna change our whole city. It's going to take pockets because needs are different. Mm -hmm. As I say, with the mental health, with families, uh, with those wraparound services. So we've got to look at all different factors. What's good in a tiny home for a single individual or a a couple that needs a place to stay that have been on the streets for years is different than a family. They need apartments, they need stability, they need someone to help them with their financial. One of the things that we have also looked at that people don't always realize, and we're working with John Fothergill, the treasurer, how do we keep people in their homes? That it doesn't go, and, and John does a great job of trying to keep people it's taxes up to date because if your property tax, you know, if your properties go on uh, the block to sale, it's hard to recuperate. From it that. is. So, we're, Jeannie, we're out of time. I know. I can, you know, I'm like Mac. I can, there's so many things that I'm involved with that we started because there's people that can't even get. Oh, I'll let you finish. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're 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 exactly what we needed to hear. Thank you for taking time. Thank you so much. Will you come back and do time. it again? Because clearly this yes. is going to be an ongoing issue. Yes. Thank and you so much. And we're getting much. ready to go next month to um, Austin. We're out of time. Thank, Thank you, Jeannie. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us, folks. We're all out of time. We'll see you back here next time.